Not, not just a sin. Not just a sin. Not just. More than that. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam cursed. He cursed. He cursed all four. And he said they're all equally guilty. The one who takes riba. The one who gives, the pays riba. You borrowed money and interest and you're paying the interest. The prophet has cursed you. The one who records the transaction. And the two witnesses said they're all equally guilty. If you have the curse of Muhammad upon you, you can perform your salat, it will not be accepted. You can perform your hajj, it will not be accepted. You can give zakat, it will not be accepted. You can fast in Ramadan, it will not be accepted. Once you have the curse of a prophet upon you, nothing will be accepted. I, by Allah's kindness, studied in five universities. I'm a former diplomat in the foreign ministry of my country. Okay? I lived in New York for 10 years. And while I was in New York, I had a very high profile as a scholar of Islam. When I left New York two weeks after 9-11, I was driving a car that was worth $500. A few days before my departure, somebody was driving and they hit the back wheel of my car. The cost of repair was more than the value of the car. So I decided to jump the car. But to junk the car, I had to pay $175 for junking. I could have gone to the bank very easily and bought a car with a bank loan on interest. I didn't have to drive a $500 car. Huh? $500 in New York for a car is a really very old car. Huh? That was my choice. So you make your choice. Another time, uh, somebody gave me a car. <laughs> uh, Buick Electra, big like a house. But you need a gas station for a car like that. <laughs> so I'm driving to Staten Island <coughs> and the car overheating. So I left it on the highway the side and got a job. He went and gave my two lectures. When I came back for the car in the evening, car not there. Gone. So we went to the police station to report. Police said, we picked up your car and took it to the garage out there. So go to that garage. So I went to the garage, the garage took out the carburetor, took out all kind of things from the car. So now if I want this car, is I have to pay more than the value of the car. So the idea is for me to leave the car with them. So they just said, just sign the transfer form and we'll keep the car. <laughs> so sign the transfer form. So I'm not, no car. Uh, an Italian-American businessman came to see me the next day. He says, you, your car is gone. He says, allow me, I'm going to pay the lease, a new car for you. Can't have you without a car. All that you have to do is to pay the insurance. A brand new car, he's paying the lease. All I have to do is to pay the insurance. But because it's a brand new car, it's a lease car, you have to take full comprehensive insurance. I said, no, thank you. I am not comfortable with insurance. And if I have to take an insurance, it has to be the minimum. So I refuse that car. Brand new car. Okay? So we all have choices to make. 
if you want a house like one that the prophet lived in and all his wives you can build that with bulu, bamboo bamboo and wood and you can build it in less than 10,000 ringgits or if you want in Damansara Heights for 5 million ringgits that's your choice okay so we all make our choices whether it be a car out there or a house or whatever it is and Allah will open a way for his servants when he sees in the heart of the servant 